guys! Today I'm going to review Curse of the Crimson Altar. On the anniversary of the night they burn Lavinia Morley, many strange and sinister dreams are experienced. But are they dreams? Or are they the signs of the Curse of the Crimson Altar? Curse of the Crimson Altar came out in 1968 and is a British horror film. It came out in 1970 in the US with a different title, The Crimson Cult, and was also cut. It's a Tigan film, distributed by American International Pictures. The film was directed by Vernon Sewell, and the screenplay was written by Mervyn Hainsman and Henry Lincoln. And it's based on the H.P. Lovecraft story, The Dreams in the Witch House, from 1933. This was the final British film to feature Boris Karloff. Music was by Peter Knight. The film runs 89 minutes. The film stars Christopher Lee, Boris Karloff, Barbara Steele, Mark Aden, Michael Goff, Rupert Davis and Virginia Witherell. So in this film, a character played by Mark Aden, he's looking for his brother, wondering what's happened to him because he's gone to this house. Last he's heard, he was there. So he's going into the house investigating. And it was actually filmed in a genuine haunted house. So that, that was unusual. Good setting for the film. And this film has a terrific cast. That's what makes this film so special. Because it, it teams up Christopher Lee and Boris Karloff. As well as Barbara Steele. Even Mark Aiden's been in a lot. Hey, he used to be in bloody Coronation Street. Is that bloody killer. He was a right twat in it. Yes, Bones he was. And he was in Doctor Who as well, in the Marco Polo story. Mark Aiden's actually good in this. I like the relationship with him and the, the woman who he meets in the house. Hey, Phil, you say you bloody knockers an ass in this film. Wait a minute. Yes! Yes, Bones, it's a bit raunchy in places. So there's some really strange party scenes, quite raunchy for a film in 1968. Hey, hell, a bloody fellow with bloody reindeer horns on his bloody head. <laughs> Looks soft as bloody shit. Do you think he's fucking rude off the red nosed reindeer? <laughs> And there's dream sequences as well. They're well shot. In the dream sequences, you see Barbara Steele with green paint on her face and body. She looks really attractive, actually. Sort of like a Star Trek woman in green. She's not really in the film much. So it seemed a pity getting Barbara Steele and not using her much. I am Lavinia, mother of the mysteries. Keeper of the Black Secret. Lavinia's influence has spanned the centuries, maintained her innocence up to the very end. They didn't believe her and burned her at the stake. I think the selling point for this film, though, is taming Christopher Flynn and Boris Karloff together in the same film. That's like unusual casting. Usually it's Christopher Flynn and Peter Cushion. And Christopher Flynn is quoted as saying he was freezing making this film. The house used for the film was called Grimm's Dyke and is allegedly a haunted house. Christopher Lee is reported as saying he spent the whole picture shivering with cold, despite Tigan's best efforts to keep the place warm. He's a morny bloody bugger, that Christopher Lee. What the hell's he expect? The bugger was winter. How be bloody cold. I don't like the setting of the film, though. That actual house was supposed to be really haunted. That makes the film even more area. I think the best thing about the film for me though is uh, Boris Karloff. Even though he's like old, he was over 80 at the time. He, he gave a brilliant performance in this film. Well now, what do you think of it? Marvellous, John. Absolutely marvellous. Uh, and you, Mr. Manning? Yes, good stuff. And it's uh, similar to a lot of his later films. He seemed to almost peak towards the end. So his last few films are great. Films like Target, that's excellent. He's brilliant in that. It's sad that he died not long after the film was made. 
Boris Karloff was over 80 when he made this film and was in poor health and was required for two night shots. Karloff would get a cold making the film and had to spend several days in a private clinic under observation. However, he was given a clean bill of health and travelled back to Hollywood to make four more back-to-back -back films. Sadly, he passed away before Curse of the Crimson Altar was released and Tygen was so nervous about him dying and they were worried in case the film was labelled the film that killed Boris Karloff. The producers would later release a quote saying the actor contracted bronchitis not in England but in Hollywood. There's a wicked bit in the film where Mark Aiden says Boris Karloff will pop up in a few minutes <laughs> and he does three minutes later you see his appearance. It's a bit like one of those old houses in horror films. Yeah, I know what you mean. So Boris Karloff's going to pop up at any moment. Even Michael Goff's in it. He gives a bit of a over-the-top hammy performance, though. Rupert Davis is in. He was brilliant in Dracula's Risen from the Grave as the, the Monsignor. But even though it's got a great cast, it's a bit disappointing. After such a brilliant cast, you expect a masterpiece. But this film, it's a bit of a letdown, really. The script... Although it's based on a H.P. Lovecraft story, the, the screenplay for the film, it's a bit of a letdown. There's not many scares in this film either. It lacks a bit of atmosphere. And the endings are let down as well. It's just Christopher Lee had a split personality and he's a disciple of a, a witch that was killed years ago. And you say, yeah, uh, towards the end, Boris Karloff, telling Mike Aiden, he was a bit crackers. <laughs> So he had like a, a, a split personality. I thought he was a warlock, sworn to destroy the descendants of Paul of accusers. And you see Christopher Lee up at, at the top of the house, and he transforms into Barbara Steele's character. So overall, with such a great cast, this is a bit disappointing, but I still enjoyed it. I thought Mike Aiden was good. I like the chemistry between him and the character of... The, the woman in the house, they worked well together. I thought Christopher Lee was an autopilot. He wasn't particularly good in this film, actually. Although Boris Karloff was brilliant. Just a pity he wasn't in more. And Barbara Steele was wasted. She was hardly in it. So what would I give it out of 10? That's a, an interesting one. Karloff's performance gave it an extra mark. So out of 10, I'll give it a 7. 7 out of 10. But if you think for once again, like it, I thought it was a lot of bloody rubbish, Phil. Gets out. Okay, everybody, bye. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye. Bye. Let's see. Oh, really? What do you collect? Instruments of torture. <laughs>